go. Reunited and it feels so good. I can't resist singing. Uh, yes, guys, I'm Sai. Welcome to Cardiff City World. And uh, I am very happy to say that we've got another uh, ex Cardiff City player joining us ahead of the South Wales Derby at the weekend. Delighted to be welcomed. Once again, the world feels right as uh, Super Kevin McNaughton is here. How are you, my friend? Very good. Just relaxing. Got a day off today, so just got the feet off, enjoying myself. That's the way, mate. That's the way. Surely, uh, the weather by you cannot be as bad as it is here because it has just been rain non stop for what feels yeah. like six months. I'm in Scotland, so it is. <laughs> it's, great, it's, just, it's just like every day, just rain, rain, rain. <laughs> depressing mate but what is not depressing is uh it's the week coming into the south wales derby it's um it's always an exciting week mate um before we kind of get your predictions and all you know all that sort of stuff been talking to people about their personal memories from that fixture um is there any derbies which stick out for you when you look back which are a bit uh, enjoyable or a bit tasty um Probably the one they'll win uh, at, the, at the Liberty Stadium. Um, Beller scoring that sort of wonder goal. Really, I think that was that was a that was a nice memory. Um, and the, the, also the the game we drew. I think we scored pretty much last couple of minutes of the game at at name Park. I think I can't remember what game. Um, I think it maybe finished two two or one all. Um, but I think Ross. Just remember the last sort of five minutes, we just nicked the equaliser and the place was jumping. Um, mm. But nah, a lot of good memories. Of the, I mean, the first game wasn't very good. I didn't enjoy the first game because we got popped around a bit. Um, mm. The first uh, League Cup game, uh, I think they got beat 1 0 at Swansea. Um, and they, they kept the, the ball really well. That was my first experience of sort of Swansea try to you know, keep possession. Didn't really do a lot with it, but they kept the ball really well at that stage. Um, obviously, it's changed a little bit now in the, the way they play, but um, it's one thing that when I remember playing against them, um, they kept the ball really well. It was they, they frustrated the life out of you at times, but we we sort of found a way to cope with that, and we got a couple of results off the back of that against them. Yeah, they had that period, didn't they, where they was just like possession, 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 and they did have a, like a period where they didn't always do a great deal with it. A lot of sort of one 0 wins and stuff as they were kind of developing that style. Is that frustrating? Like as a player, like when you come up against those sides and it's, you're kind of chasing a ball a little bit, and it's difficult because um, it can be frustrating. Um, I know. I remember certainly the first game. They were, they were they were a better team in the first game, but um, mm -hmm. they never really created too many chances. I think they ended up scoring my free kick, but apart from that, they never created a lot of chances. Um, that was just the sort of style of play they had. They had the sort of the keep ball mentality. Um, we were a bit more rough around the edges. We were a bit more gung ho and kind of, you know, we went for it a wee bit. It probably created more chances than them, uh, but at the same time, you know, we didn't keep the ball as, as well and probably conceded more goals as well at times. So, but that was the sort of style of play we played. We were pretty gung ho under Dave Jones. Yeah, that's it. And it was um, they were always they're always tight games, and they they're always there's that bit of tension and and stuff. I always think like when teams are popping it around like that, that there's there's got to be uh, a part of like particularly the players who like a tackle and stuff. There's got to be part of you which just wants to stick them up in the air sometimes as they kind of <laughs> popping it around you and that. But maybe that's just me and my. Uh, Lack of patience. I don't know. Nah, that does happen. Frustration, <laughs> frustration creeps in a bit, and you do. I think that's. I think Steve McPhail ended up getting sent off that game, and it was probably one of the contributing factors. Is we never had a lot of the ball when he was probably getting a bit frustrated. Yeah, there's been a few sendings sendings off in in the fixture over the years. Do the players feel like obviously? Um, as I speak to earlier, Willie Bowling was saying like there's a lot of additional press in the week coming up to it, especially in the local press and stuff like that. Everyone wants to speak to the players and stuff. Obviously, it's a big game. Do the players feel 
the the rivalry like obviously as much as you know and compared to how the fans are the fans get quite frustrated you know not frustrated like they head up they hate they hate each other than like Cardiff ones the fans do the players feel that rivalry coming into the games yeah definitely I certainly felt it anyway and I know certain Swansea players making comments and stuff I remember it was Alan Tate I think made a few comments before one of the games as well so I think that sort of added a little bit of spice to it I remember it's quite hard because you don't really want to get sucked into that you don't want to get sucked into sort of getting caught up in the motion of the game because at the end of the day it's you've got to play football mm. it's not easy if you're you're wound right up and up tight going into a football match I think there's a fine balance between being too far up for it and sort of keeping your head basically and I think certainly those games were a challenge in terms of keeping your head and not like losing the plot so but definitely you, you notice the difference yeah, coming in this week there's obviously a lot of furor before the game um, but when the, the, the whistle blew and you sort of got into the match it, it always seemed to settle down and became a game of football again Mm. They, um, I always remember Robbie Savage uh, playing for Wales. It was the first time Wales had played Northern Ireland for ages, and I always remember him. He had like tears coming down his face as the national anthem was playing, and he was so wound up, like you could visibly see it. And I think he got sent off like ten minutes into the game or something. It's it's one of those where you want to be up for it, but also you don't want to like you say overstep like that i think last year Callum robinson got sent off for cardiff early doors and changes the game doesn't it and it, and it just makes it a lot more difficult yeah you've got to keep sort of composed i think i think you get caught up in this sort of the mentality the fans mentality is, is you know it's, it's, it's do or die sort of thing yeah mm -hmm. caught up into that um but you need to remember it's a game of football. You've got to actually be able to play. You've got to actually make decisions on the pitch. Um, yeah, yeah. Sort of the heat of the battle. So I think the more composed you are, the, you know, the, you make these decisions a lot better. And, um, ultimately, it, it usually leads to a better outcome. I think, like you say, Savage probably got caught up in the emotion of the day. Mm. Sort of saying, don't play the, the, play the game, not the occasion sort of thing. I think that's... I got said to me quite a few times before these big games, you know. So I think it's there's a bit of truth in that. You've got to actually just go out there and play the game. Yeah, and I think ultimately, like it's it's different for the fans and the players, and like you say, for the fans, it's do or die, and it's it's the sort of thing which like depresses them for weeks afterwards, and then probably till the next game, till you till they can kind of try and put it right. It, it's one of those. But in terms of like. Uh, Obviously, you were at Cardiff for a while. As you were at the club longer, did you find that they became like more intense and you felt that rivalry more? Or was it you always sort of felt it from the first one? No, that, if anything, the first one was probably a bit more because the, the clubs had obviously not faced each other for a while. I think mm. there was obviously a bit of history behind it. Um, so... The, I think if anything, we we'll probably be a bit overhyped for that first game. Um, but once you've played in it, I think you sort of you get your bearings a bit in terms of what you what to expect in terms of the atmosphere and stuff like that. So for me, it, would, it became easier to get the more games uh, that I was involved in certainly, and there was more focus on actual football than it was to sort of the the whole sort of hurrah before the game and the build up and stuff like that I think the, the focus became a bit more football for me anyway that was my experience of it yeah. I know it's much different for different players but... um, In the South Wales derbies you played in what was the best performance uh, in a Cardiff City shirt that you saw from an individual over those games? Um, there was a few I thought obviously Bella's performance at the Liberty was good he obviously just grabbed just the game by his scruff and neck second half and just a wee bit of magic sometimes is all it takes to sort of divide the teams and for, for me that day it was just his little bit of composure and just the ability to, to produce a sort of strike like that um, for me that was a, that's why I remember I, that's my sort of lasting memory of the, the derby to be honest with you it was his strike um, yeah um, 
but there was obviously the, like I didn't play in that game, but we, we obviously the, the chopped a goal towards the end of the game as well. Um, I think it was three two game or if I'm correct. Cool, it was uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's just the atmosphere that day was brilliant, and obviously getting that late like, goal just the place erupted. Um, I was down at the, the the last derby at home. Uh, managed to get down to that with my wife. Um, and it, there wasn't, I wouldn't say there was a lot of football played, but um, it was a Cardiff second half. I think they just stepped up a little bit and they got their sort of just rewards. Yeah, just that extra extra bit of quality, wasn't it, in the second, yeah. the second half? I thought they, um, they kind of put it to bed. It's interesting, like you say about last minute goals, obviously, Cardiff on the back now of the weekend against mm. Ipswich, got an injury time equaliser and then got that 99th minute winner, I think it was. Like obviously those sorts of last minute goals and victories, they give the squad and the players a massive lift and a bit of confidence. Obviously, uh, Swansea have been been struggling and then the managers come in, settled it a little bit, and then they lost against Bristol the other day. Do you think there's something to be said in the derby games for having a bit of confidence like that last minute win at the weekend against the you know one of the top teams? Or do you think you know, form goes out the window and it's just you can do it. I think the form goes out the window a bit, but that certainly will give Cardiff a lift. There's no doubt about that. Going into that game will give them certainly... That any games that I've ever played in when you score a last-minute goal is just uh, is such a buzz. I mean, it, mm. it transcends during the week, usually. You get that sort of... You, you take a, a bit of momentum off the back of that. So hopefully that does work in Cardiff's favour. I know it's, it's sort of form does go out the window. So if you, I think if you have been having a bit of a sticky patch, this could be the sort of sort of the the thing that gets your season going again and getting the derby win. So that's what Swansea will be looking for. Um, yeah, they need that. They need that. I mean, from, from Swansea point of view, they, uh, I think they can't afford to lose which yeah. makes it a bit interesting because the way the fixtures are, if they lose on Saturday, they could get really dragged into the relegation. Mm -hmm. And it's that's another interesting aspect to it is that, yeah, there's you know there's a lot riding on the game because it's a derby, but there's a lot riding on it because of relegation and playoffs potentially. But for me, I don't know if I'm an outlier. I don't want Swansea to get relegated because I would miss the South Wales derbies and the games. So it's it's a bit of a weird one because your rivals, you almost, you know, you never want to see your rivals do well. But equally, I don't know, there's part of me which would like to see them slide down the leagues. And then there's another one which, you know, I enjoy the big games, you know. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy the derbies. It's, I try to get down as many as I can. Um, and I've been a bit of a good luck charm, to be honest with you. Every time I've been there, one so. Um, ah, when I think you get down to them, mate, then. Uh, no. <laughs> This is the first one I've missed for a wee while, so... Oh, God, I'll tell you that. That's, that's yeah. it now. Good luck charms out the window. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I don't pay a lot of attention to what's going on in Swansea, to be honest with you. They, yeah. They've slid down the leagues and that's fine by me, doesn't it, really? No, that's it, innit? And I, I, you know, I said to, I said to Ernie yesterday... Um, Obviously, the, the derby fixture has been quite brutal for us over the last couple of seasons. We haven't picked up many wins or goals and stuff. And that performance at the start of the season really kind of set the tone for Cardiff's good early start. And I go into this game and I, I feel more confident than I have done for a while. But that isn't always a good thing as a fan because quite often you get bitten uh, yeah. on the backside when you feel like that. But I, like Cardiff have been quite good, so they've been good recently. So hopefully they can take that in. Do you think? Um, where do you see the? How do you see the game playing out? And and what's your prediction for the result and stuff? I'm hoping similar. So I, I think it'll be similar to the the first game. Um, I don't I think football in terms of the quality of football. I, I don't think there was a lot on display. From both teams, I think the sort of occasion was probably got the best of a few players, but um, I could imagine it'd be pretty similar. And I think it's just down to a wee bit of quality at the end of the day if Cardiff can produce that little bit of quality. Um, and obviously, off the back of that that last minute job, 
that should probably give them a little bit of emphasis. Probably puts them a little bit, obviously, going into the game, probably favourites, which sometimes doesn't suit that tag. So, we'll see how it goes. Indeed. Uh, what do you reckon the score is going to be? 2 0 no Cardiff. Good man. Good man. Positive. Positive thinking, eh? Positive yeah. thinking. Yeah, man. Um, Kev, look, I'll let you go. It's, it's quite early in the morning as well, you know? So, uh, let you yeah, go. Look. Enjoy your day off. And, uh, look, I appreciate your time, mate, always. And uh, it's, it's always it's always a pleasure to have a chat, mate. And I'm sure we'll uh, we'll catch up soon anyway. But uh, yeah. appreciate your time, my friend. Fingers crossed. Boys get a win. That's it. Come on, Cardiff. Thank <music> you.